Welcome back to part two of our EX6 fruit array. So far we generated a random number from one through 10 by using a math.random method and also a math.seal method that actually wraps around that. And we had to put a little multiplication in here because our random number only goes up to one but not including one. So we had to add that in there. And now what we're gonna do, instead of just generating a number, we're gonna take a number and try to apply it and try to pull something from our array that we have here because we know that our arrays are associated with numbers. They're associated with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if we, if we know that, we can generate, we can pull something out of this array. And to do that, what we're going to do is, first of all, from what we have here, we have we, the last little statement we did here, we rounded up. So, it, so any number that isn't zero, it rounds up to one. So we're gonna actually round down. So I'm gonna change this to be floor. And that was these math objects, math.floor, it rounds down. So if you have anything under one, it's gonna round down to zero. So we're gonna make sure we do that. So we're gonna do floor. And then if we wanna do it from this array, we have or zero, one, two, three, four. So we're, we're going to say times 4 and just see what comes up here because we have 4, although we have 5 elements in our array right now. We'll see which one we really need. We may need 5 or 4 and we, and we could check out what random number generates first by doing that. So just by doing that we, we can go here and just try it a couple times and we, there's a 3 and I'll just keep doing it and see if I get a, see if I get a 4 because this one is going to be 4, pair is going to be 4. So we just want to make sure that it captures the number 4 index. All right, I did this a number of times, and it never came up with a 4, so I think we're going to need 5 here. Since we're rounding down, I think we're going to need 5 here. And I'll just try it a couple times and see if we get a 4. And there, we got a 4, so we're okay. So we know we're getting either a 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 out of here, and we have to have 5. And 5 is actually the length of this, and that, that'll help us a little bit later. So we're, we're using a 5 right now. Um, but one thing will help us if we know the length, so that's something we could put in there. But one thing we're going to do, since we're generating random numbers that are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, out of here what we can do is we could just put something on here, under here. I'm going to copy this and paste this. I'm going to say fruits. And then I'm going to put a bracket, and I have to make sure I close it with my parentheses. And what it should do is give me two lines on the first console log. It'll show me the number, 3. And then on this one, it's taking the array, and instead of using the number, it's using random, which is going to be either 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. So what's actually happening here is it's basically substituting the random number in here for the array. So the random number that's generated is 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. And then the name that's generated, that it's pulling from there, it's actually displaying the number 3 index from the array, which happens to be mango. So it's my console log is showing me two things. It's showing me the random number variable, and then it's showing me the array with the index number of 3. So I could put... I can keep doing this. So if I keep backspacing, it should do random numbers and give me a random fruit. Now we got banana. Now we got mango again. Now we got orange. So you can see what it's doing. It's doing random fruits here. So we could do things with this. We can generate random images. We could generate random names. You could play games with this. Something we've done things where we've done a rocks, paper, scissors kind of things where you can do the, you could do the the names, you could do the images and you know, it kind of makes things a little more interesting. That's what we could kind of do with this. So I think that's all we really need to do with this. Now, one thing you could do, you could make another variable. You could say var, and I could say ran fruit for random fruit. Var ran fruit. And I could say equals, and I could actually copy this fruits and the random number from it. And I could put this in here. So that should that should generate that name and I'll put a semicolon here so that ran fruit should be whatever is generated from this so what you could do is I could even I could even delete these things well let me delete part of this and in console log you could even put a string in there you could say you know today's 
special fruit and you could put ran fruit in here now remember when you're putting a string now we're having problems here because we have semi because we have uh, apostrophes in here so I'm gonna put a quote around here and then today's special fruit is and we already have a quote there and remember to join a variable to a string that's a string and we have to have a space in there so we're gonna put the plus sign in there and then at the end you wouldn't really need anything other than you know if you're gonna put a period you would have to do a plus sign and then treat the period as a string so put put quotes here and put a period in it and then at the end we would still have to put put a parentheses to finish off our console log and put a semicolon you can see what's happening here today especially it's already doing it as I'm typing it today's special fruit is pear today's special fruit is orange so it's generating so what we did now is we we took that random number we stuck it in the array number and we generated a variable called ran fruit and now we're just putting ran fruit in our string so we're just kind of outputting a string here and it's just saying that so each time I do this it's gonna show me a random fruit even before I put the semicolon we have mango so we have a random fruit so it just opens up the possibilities that we're gonna be able to do uh, with JavaScript we'll be able to do some random things we'll be able to do some game type things things of chance a little bit and we d even did a little bit of that with action script with flash but it's the same kind of thing so as long as you can use the math random and then let's look at what we did here we used an array and we put items in array which was very easy to do we have a math.random method that generates a random number. We just have to multiply it. And one last thing I'll do here, you know, just so you don't have to be adding these up, you know, because like, what if you had like 27 of them and you have to be counting all of them? Another thing you could do here is you could just put, I could put multiply and I can just put, remember we, we talked about that property of length at the very beginning. I could put fruits.length. I could put that right in here times fruits.length and that way if I ever add one in here I don't have to change that number so if I wanted to add grapefruit all right, now I have six I have six elements in my array but I don't have to change this I don't have to change that to be times six because I have the length so I can use fruits dot length I could even make a variable that's the length but I could I could still I could you know make a variable called FL for fruits length or I could just type that in there depends on you know what you're doing whenever you want to shorten the code you, you have the ability to do that with variables but we don't need that right now that you know at least we know what we're already combining a bunch of things in this variable ran num so you know that at least kind of tells me what I'm doing if I had FL in there I might not know what that is so at least fruits dot length kind of tells me that that's the length of the fruits array so that's what I have here so as long as I keep doing this it might come up with grapefruit one of these that's another thing we can do so we can we can replace a number with our property of fruits.length because we know the length of that array we know the number of elements in that array and again we used floor and seal to round up or round down and then we just kind of use console log to kind of output we could output strings we could output variables and we're doing it without any HTML so this kind of helps us again it's just an area to kind of experiment a little bit and kind of share some code and kind of learn some things about arrays but that's what we're doing here in this one so when you're done with this one that's all you can do we're gonna kind of end with this and if you want to save it you can just save it now it gave it just some weird name you could edit that and give it a name and I'll just call it uh, ex6 and I'll just call it fruit array so that way it'll be saved when I see it in my collection now if I go back to my collection I'll have it saved now let me go back to collections and go in here now there's only one pen in my collection so that means I don't have that if I go in here I probably just have that other one in here so I don't have it in my collection I'm gonna go to my pens I have to go back here and I'll go back to pens and these are my pens and then I can just hover over this and add to a collection this is my fruit array I'll say add to collection and I'll have a little drop down and I'll say 235 and that's it so it's added to it so then when I go back to my collections well these are my collections I guess since I'm in that area so now if I go in here I have two pens in here I have my fruit array and I have my code pen and when you click on fruit array what you want to do is you just want to copy this and then send me that URL and that's all you have to do and then I'll have that so just paste that in an email and I'll have your URL 
for this exercise. So that's all you have to do with the X6.